Aloha, my name is John Souza, and I'm so pleased to be the senior project advisor to this young man, Julian Constantine, who is a senior at the Hawaii Academy of Arts and Science. Without further ado, I'm just going to turn it over to you, Julian, and please take it. John, and to everybody else who has been, who has attended this presentation, everyone of you all get to present a lot to a brief presentation of domestic child abuse and the threat it is to our society. So thank you all for attending. I also want to note that this month is Child Abuse Prevention Month. Then I will start by a quote by Vashti Coraz Vega. Don't turn your face away. Once you've seen, you can no longer act like you don't know. Open your eyes to the truth. It's all around you. Don't deny what the eyes to your soul have revealed to you. Now that you know, you cannot feign ignorance. Now that you're aware of the problem, you cannot pretend you don't care. To be concerned is to be human, to act is to care. Now, my senior project was chosen to bring awareness and to help decrease or even end the child abuse in Hawaii. That is the end goal. Though the task is too large for one person to take on alone, seeing the child abuse spans the state, nation, and world. Worldwide, Approximately 40 million children below the age of 15 are subjected to child abuse each year. In 2019, 4.3 million child maltreatment referrals were made in the United States. Child abuse crosses all socioeconomic and educational levels, religions, ethnic, and cultural groups. If we look at the graph on the right, it is a graph of the number of cases of child abuse in the United States in 2019 by age from nine to below one years old. Now, on average, there's about 37,000 cases of child abuse from the ages of nine to one. Below one years old, there is an exact amount of 97,879. Now, this graph shows the amount of total reported and confirmed cases each year in Hawaii from 1986 till 2019. In 2019, there was a total of 4,417 reports of child abuse in Hawaii. Of those, over 1,300 were confirmed. After more examination of the graph, we see that 1999 through 2005 had the most reported and confirmed cases of child abuse in nearly half a century, excluding the outlier of 2009. In 1986, there were around 600 more reported cases than in 2019, with a 20% decrease in the confirmed cases. A notable change are the new lows reported and in reported and confirmed cases reached from 2011 to 2017, the lowest since 1988, though this could be either a slow resolve or people being more silent about child abuse in the household. Now, facts can be numbers if not given a definition. We must ask ourselves, what is child abuse? Well, child abuse can be split up into three categories, abuse, neglect, and household dysfunction. Each category is then broken up into specific subdivisions. Abuse breaks up into physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. Neglect is formed of two subdivisions. Neglect, neglect is formed of two subdivisions, physical and emotional. Household dysfunction is divided amongst quite a few subdivisions, subcategories. These are relatives with a mental illness, incarcerated relatives, a violently abused parent, mother or father, substance abusers, and a divorce. It is important to know that simple abuse and neglect categories here can be broken down even further to yield things such as cyberbullying and other detrimental ways of abuse. Now, many of the aforementioned subcategories of child abuse can lead to various long-term effects. These effects can be broken down as well into categories, those of behavioral, physical, and mental abuse effects. Behavioral health effects from child abuse is broken down into a lack of physical activity, smoking, alcoholism, drug use, and missed work. Physical health effects can be broken down into severe obesity, diabetes, STDs, heart disease, cancer, stroke, and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which, quoted by mayoclinic.org, 
is an inflammatory lung disease that causes obstructed airflow from the lungs. Mental health can primarily be comprised of depression, suicidality, and self-harm. One notable portion of research in the field of understanding and recognizing abuse is the ACEs test. ACE stands for Adverse Childhood Experiences, which is any possibly traumatic experience that occurs during someone's childhood. This brief two minute video explains the ACE study even more. What would you do if you knew there was a way to help protect your family from future health problems, such as diabetes, high blood pressure, even alcoholism, drug abuse, and depression? The future sounds so far away, but to your children, Every minute in their growing brain counts toward a healthier, more successful life. That's because positive experiences and environments help build stronger foundations for developing healthier brains. And healthier brains lead to greater emotional well-being, greater success in school, and brighter futures. Negative experiences like living in a house with verbal or physical abuse, sick or divorced parents, or emotional neglect create toxic stress that can hinder your child's brain development and lead to those unhealthy outcomes in the future we talked about. We've all heard of stress, but what makes stress toxic? When the weight from all those adverse childhood experiences we mentioned builds up, it can become too much to bear and affect how children look at the world. We call those experiences ACEs for short. Leaves you wondering why you've probably never heard of ACEs before. ACEs are common, but talking about them isn't. In fact, two out of three patients surveyed have at least one ACE, but they may not know how that ACE score is affecting them or their family. That's because a person with a high ACE score doesn't win. As the number of ACEs increases, so does the risk for negative health outcomes. A score of five or more on the ACE survey raises the chance of developing severe health concerns in adulthood to 55%, and those with six or more ACEs can die an average of 20 years earlier than those with no ACEs at all. Sounds scary, but the worst part? Parents with high ACE scores are more likely to raise children with high scores too, and it can lead to behavioral issues, school failure, and physical and mental problems. But even if you have a high ACE score, there's good news, because now you know, and now you can change the direction of your life and help others in your family. The key? Well, as we mentioned earlier, ACEs are common, but talking about them isn't. Changing the conversation can help break the cycle and change lives. Now you may be wondering who I am. Well, my name is Julian Constantine and I am a graduating senior at Hawaii Academy of Arts and Sciences in Pahoa, Hawaii. I have a personal drive towards what I've made this presentation on, preventing and ending child abuse. That is because I myself am a sexual child abuse survivor. Not only that, but for many years, I shared a roof with my progressively abusive and sinister father. With this past, I intend to transpire my pain into a career of helping to prevent and end child abuse wherever possible. I am also looking to pursue a degree in child psychology or social work in the 2022 to 2023 school year. Now, we must look at what makes someone vulnerable to child abuse. What will be a potential risk factor for parents to abuse their children. And there are a number of ways, though primarily parents or, giver, parents or caregivers who are quick to anger, who are stressed out, who were abused as children and such ACEs or memories will be triggered by certain things that the child does and doesn't know that they're doing to the parent or parents or caregivers who are struggling with an untreated mental illness. Living in poverty is another very stressful situation and being around those who are using or abusing substances can also lead to child abuse. Now, preventing child abuse is the most important goal of ending anything. There are different ways to help prevent child abuse as either a parent or caregiver and someone outside of the household who are designated as an ally. Parents and caregivers ask for help. There is no shame in it. Parenting is a difficult thing and as so, sometimes we all need help. Stepping back from any such stressful situation you encounter when possible, because not always is it, 
and allow you to regain your composure before losing too much of it and lashing out on your children. Be careful of your words because the wrong ones can cut deeper than a blade ever could. Do not angrily discipline. This goes in hand with the last point. You may give the, long, the wrong lesson to your children or say something that you wish you had not. A very important thing to do is supervise your child online. Make sure that they are not being negatively influenced by the majoritively predatory online world. For those that are outside of the household and know that something is going on inside the household or suspect it, report the abuse. It's better that the people who are, you know, the victims and the people doing the child abuse get the help that they need. Both are traumatized people and they both need the therapy in order to move past it. Support child abuse prevention programs or even volunteer for them a massive way to promote the end and prevention and such of child abuse. And another major way for allies to help parents and caregivers is to offer your aid. Simple things such as babysitting, mowing their lawn, laundry, even lending your ear to them as I myself do a lot to my friends. And events, go out, hang at the beach, spend some quality time away from the stress of the household. In many cases, unfortunately, child abuse is unable to be prevented. Knowing that is important to know what to look for in child abuse in the child and parent when abuse is going on within the household. The child and parent will react in their own ways to prolonged situations of abuse. The child will typically stop socializing. The child will openly dislike the parent as will the parent openly dislike the child. The child will be unusually passive and disassociated and doesn't want to return home after external activities outside of the household. The parent will demonstrate minimal care for the child, does not see that the child is good or worthy, that it's a burden, denies the child's issues at home or at school, and has a disregard for the child's mental or physical health. Recovering from the, the trauma of child abuse is crucial to the prevention of even more and a better life for the victim. External aid would be going outside of yourself to receive help. Some people you could go to are a therapist or therapeutic specialist, a friend, a counselor if you're in school still, or even a police officer. And if you have the courage to do so, which I encourage every bit of, you speak to an officer about the experiences you've had, if such as you've been molested or raped or anything related. Now, internal resolve would be looking inside yourself and resolving the pain and memories you feel in order to move past them. The steps to take in the direction of healing are composed of grounding yourself, recalling your memories of the adverse childhood experiences, allowing your emotions to flow, and coming to terms with the past and what has happened in order to move past it and finally give up that burden that you carry. Now some resources to look at if you suspect child abuse or neglect, you can go to this number or the toll free number here. To learn more about child abuse in Hawaii, visit www.hawaiicjc.org or www.preventchildabusehawaii.org. To get help recovering from child abuse, talk with someone. You can find a mental health professional at directory hawaii at directory.hawaii mft.org. Call the Child Help National Abuse Hotline 1-800-4-A-CHILD or 1-800-422-4453. Children age and so do adults. The world adults leave to children is the same world that the children will have to grow up with. If the child abuse is not stopped soon, the world left for the children will only grow worse. The adverse childhood experiences the child children have accumulated will be brought out on the world if left untreated. They, as, if, as has been presented, have a good chance of passing down the abuse to their own children. I stand here today presenting this information so that you and I can bring forth a change and make sure this ends with us. Thank you for all listening to my senior project presentation. God bless you all.